Hello again everyone, welcome to another episode of Retro Tech. Today I'll be looking at the 20L5 Sony PVM and going over specifically how to calibrate geometry on this monitor. Before I do that though, I wanted to give a very thankful and special shout out to my friend David Crow. David did a fantastic job for me. I didn't ask him to do this, but he made this fabulous background for my SD to SNES and it has my awesome logo on there. I love it. And uh, he emailed that to me today and I said, man, that's perfect timing because I wanted to throw it up here today on this video. We're gonna go through this monitor and we're gonna go ahead and calibrate it. So the first thing I wanna do is pull up my calibration software or my screen generator, whatever you use to help you calibrate. Now, as I said in the past, the 240p test suite is perfect for calibrating these monitors under most situations. And the reason being is 240p has much more, um, let's see, well, uh, the way I want to put this, let's see, whenever you do something on 240p, it just translates better in 480i. So 480i is a little bit more forgiving. So whenever you get something set up for 240p, it's going to look you know you can't it's harder to calibrate something up to 480i because of the screen flicker or this you have a solid um, screen and so the best thing to do is to use something that can give you that 240p signal and uh, that way you can use that to calibrate now something else people have been asking about is other things besides this you can use anything you want to calibrate really uh, as long as it shows you a solid picture that you can go from and, and make adjustments to and see. Because if you don't, uh, you need something, but you don't have to use this if you don't have it, but this is just easier to use or even a DVD of some sort that generates these kind of patterns. But again, I don't know of one that will do it in a 240p only resolution. Most likely that will put it out at 480i or 480p or something else. Uh, so again, Use whatever you have convenient. I recommend this um, for the Super Nintendo again. So I've got my uh, pattern here pulled up, which is my grid pattern again. So let's take a look at what I'm going to be doing here. And what I want to do on this monitor, first off, this monitor has the control button over here that we've talked about in the past. I'm going to press that first, so I need to access my menu. So that should be done by pressing the menu button first and pulling up our menu and then hitting the degauss button and enter simultaneously brings up our submenu. It's very hard to see the submenu on this screen. So as I said we can get to the screen up and you see here is our first thing says signal. So we're not working on color today, not on this monitor. Um, there is some tools you can use to actually color coordinate there or calibrate this um, on its own pretty much. It's like an auto calibration, but I don't have those tools. Uh, but what we are going to do is use our up and down buttons here, and we're going to look at something else. We're going to look at our deflection. Okay, so we've got our deflection stuff here. We've got our horizontal raster and our vertical raster. And I, I know we've talked about this many times before, and I've gone through this, but the raster horizontally. So let's start with the horizontal raster. We've got our H size, our H center, and then these uh, left and right, black, 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 black uh, right, and then horizontal position, and then these two things, sub left and sub right. So on this menu for our geometry, we can pretty much eliminate most of these things where we're only going to be concerned with trying to use this horizontal size and this horizontal center most of the time. And if our center's not helping us get to where we want, we could try this position setting to get us. And this is going to shift our whole screen left and right. The way I calibrate my TVs, I do not try to worry about getting that line directly on the edge of that screen. I want to go and get that line a little bit outside of this viewing area. So I want to have my calibrated screen at the end of the day. I want it to be larger than the actual pictured area. So all those imperfections along the sideline, 
of and the top of the picture area, I want that whole scan lined or you know picture resolution. I want that whole part basically chopped out so I don't have to look at it. I just prefer to see as much of the screen as possible, and it's the best way to do that is just slightly over scan your picture. So think about that at the end of the day when you're using a horizontal size and centering, and the grid is perfect for that. That's what we're going to worry about horizontal. Again, horizontal size, horizontal center, and horizontal position. Okay? So there's another one down here for vertical. Same thing here. Vertical size and vertical center. So again, we're not worried about these settings. We just need to consider vertical center and vertical size. And it's the same thing as before. We'll try to slightly overscan that picture and we'll have, uh, we use the grid to do that. And what I'm going to do is, since you won't be able to see these settings, I'll try to tell you what setting I'm on when I have the grid pulled up and then we'll run through and we'll shuffle some settings and show you how it works because not only are you going to try to calibrate this thing, but you're going to want to uh, put a little bit of time into just testing all the different settings that you use to make sure that your capacitors are working inside the monitor and that way they're actually making an effect on your screen and working properly and you'll be able to notice it because you can't hurt the screen by just using it and scrolling through the settings and making it expanded and even if it's not correct you, you're going to want to test that so you can get it back to um, a good screen so again I'm sorry to just sit here and have a boring 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 screen for you but right now it's just some things we've got to run through so down again and menu and then the next thing is the geometry and again we got vertical linearity we got two we got a, a s linearity and a c linearity so this monitor again has two linearity settings that we can change our trapezoid our pin cushion settings which is these four pin cushion pin cushion settings and then this para control this is all our corners and our screen size wonkiness this is all the settings we're going to use every single one of these to sharpen up the linearity as well as the corner geometry as best as we can. Thankfully, this kind of a monitor really does not need to be opened up to be serviced um, if you're just trying to get a geometry fix or setting put in place. And then the rest of the settings at this point should be uh, not part of this example for today. Let's go ahead and do some horizontal stuff which is pretty self-explanatory. Again you're not going to hurt anything by doing this. So you know, if I just press that setting, expand it out, and then I'm going to just go down just to make sure that it's working properly and you can kind of see your corners better. Now while I'm working on the calibration today I'm going to actually underscan it slightly so I can see those lines on the side. So this is actually where I'm going to set it for today. And then I hit enter and it writes that setting. If I don't want it to enter and hit the setting, you hit menu and go back and it will take you back to that same setting and it will leave it on whatever it was before you made that adjustment. So you can't lose your adjustment. Just hit menu and go back and start over if you're concerned about that thing. Always remember, you know, if you want to, what um, number you're starting with. So let's go ahead now and go down to horizontal center and we'll see about moving that up and down a little bit see if you can see that see you can just hold those buttons down and let the guy you know, slide across the screen nicely you can see you got no problem so again I've got some space on both sides which is optimal for this test I'm going to hit enter and go back to the screen writing that and that's all I need for the horizontal you know there's all those kinds of things we're not going to touch those the rest of the settings for this test Let's go to the rest of vertical. Vertical size. Now we're in the vertical deflection. So you can see the size go up and then it comes down. And so again, I'm going to try to get that lined up to where I can see the red and a slight bit of black on there. Hit enter to right. I'm going to go down to the center setting. And then I'm going to go up out of the way, and then I'm going to come back down and get it right where I want it so I can see everything 
and make my adjustments and now we're done with this and again when I'm done with this the last thing I'll do is I'll expand that out so the geometry settings are going to be pretty much the same way uh, you can start with whatever you want it depends how your skip your screen looks uh, to go to the linearity test though I recommend coming down and pulling up these kind of circles because linearity is going to show you you'll get the best option so I'm on 15 right now on this first one and let's just hold that button up and see if you can see see how those circles kind of move a little bit there we go see how they spanned out and the goal of this is to actually get circles um, here, not just so I said, I'm gonna leave it on 15, uh, but we're gonna go and try the other one. We're looking to make these as round as possible, we're not trying to have any um, oval shapes. So you can kind of see if I go up and down there, it makes them oval. So those top ones are really nice and round. So we'll have to try to use the other settings. So you can go back and forth on these to and try to get your stuff um, rounder. See, I feel like that's a little bit better. So I feel like if I go up on that, it makes the circles a little wonky. So that helps some, okay? Those are your two linearity settings. You need to do those together to make your circles come back. So the next thing is the trapezoid setting on here. It's the third one down. Let's go ahead and get into it. Hopefully we can get something going with it real quickly. Let's go back. Always do the grids for these. That's the bigger grid, not the smaller grid. I want you to be able to see this. Again, this is the trapezoid setting. So I'm going to just scroll up on this and you can see what it's doing. It's making the tops and bottoms go back and forth proportionally. So you're going to want to try to just line that up as best you can. I was on 27 originally, but I didn't really like that setting, so let's try 22. And that's it for the trapezoid. So that, that does that access lane that you can do like that. You're just trying to get this thing. It could take hours of doing this, just, just trying each combination of moving around things so you get it exactly the way you want it. There's no magic formula and generally speaking any kind of menu settings that were factory set will not be uh, much of a help at this point because we're looking at a monitor that needs um, I had somebody asking me about that if, if they thought the uh, factory settings would help and it's a good starting place but you're generally going to have to move and change your uh, settings there so again that side pin and I didn't like that. Let's go back up on that a little bit. So you can see how you, you just hit that and it goes out. Um, and again, this, these, this monitor has really good controls over the deflection. Okay? And I've already can tell here that something's not looking that great. But um, you see how this next one right under it actually controls the next spot. So sometimes what you got to do is try to get everything, even if it's curved a little bit, kind of on the same curve, because then you can change the overall whole, whole pin cushion setting and change the whole screen. So it's really going to be hard to do this and not run out of time on my video, but so I'm not going to sit here and try to make it perfect um, on this video. I will do this without the video on and get it cleared up, but I just want to make sure everybody kind of understands how this works. So they can try this at home because even though mine might look this way, I, it could take me hours or, or, you know, not, it probably wouldn't take me an hour, more than an hour total at best or worst to fix this to the way I really like it. But you can kind of see just, you know, hey, that makes the thing, the screen that shifts your top. So if you have a, a, a top that's shifted over, that helps straighten that out. So. Um, that's one way to do that. That's the side pin BAL. Okay? Paracontrol. This is the second to last setting on the monitor. Let's see that. That's the screen lane. So you can see the diagonal screen lane on there. Now this is not 
this can't, um, if you have a yoke problem, this won't help you. This is just if your lines don't look straight on your screen. Now I can tell that this thing, I've kind of gotten it maybe a little worse than it actually was when I started as far as the side controls. So please don't, you know, I'll come back later and show you this when it's fixed up. But for now, I want you to understand how these settings work. And again, like I just hit menu there and go back and it'll take you back to the old control or what the old settings. So the very last thing is the side pin, another side pin, and I'll just scroll in and out on that. And you can see, again, this thing gives you an incredible amount of control over the side pins where in other monitors, you might have just been able to control just the corners. But on this later end monitor, they actually made it where you had um, one, two, three, four, I mean, you have four different settings to control something that was only controlled by one setting in prior monitors. So that's why this thing is a lot better than the older monitors. And the 20L2, any of the L series will have this same menu setup. So the techniques will work for that monitor as well. And even though it doesn't have the same line count, and even though it doesn't take the same multi-format signals all the way up to 1080 like this one does, it only goes up to 480i, those, those lower end L series monitors, they are still really good because they have the same amount of geometry control. Okay, to finish this video out, I just want everybody to know that um, please leave any comments or questions you may have about calibrations. Uh, I know this video was kind of uh, just straight into it and mostly calibration talk, but I kind of felt like maybe that would be helpful. Um, we'll do more stuff with this monitor, uh, more service work and things in the future, but I want to say thanks again for supporting the channel. and Please hit the like button and share the video if it was helpful. And as always, thanks for watching Retro Tech.